Hey there, I'm Yankel, and today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to cook absolutely perfect, juicy, delicious chicken breasts every single time. So we're gonna start with one package of our boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Now I took them out of the freezer last night and put them in the fridge. They're still a little bit frozen. So I'm gonna run them under some cold water just to finish the defrosting process. Now when it comes to defrosting chicken breasts, what you do wanna do is make sure it's fully defrosted, otherwise they tear when you pull them apart. So we're just gonna run that under some cool water for just about two, three minutes to finish that defrosting process. You can, of course, skip the overnight in the refrigerator and go straight from the freezer to the cool running water bath. That'll save you the overnight in the fridge, but it'll take a little bit longer to defrost, probably 30 to 40 minutes. So while we let that finish defrosting, we're actually gonna go preheat our oven, and we're looking at 325. Go into a basic roast cycle. Bake, roast, doesn't really matter. The goal here is 325 degrees. And all we want to happen is the cooking to finish, because we're actually gonna start everything in the pan. Looks like our chicken breast is plenty defrosted. We're gonna just put it on the tray and we're gonna head over to the counter and start cooking. So the first thing we're gonna do is take it out of the package and we're gonna pat it dry so we get a really good sear. The browning process is where the flavor happens and we wanna make sure we maximize that. Any sort of moisture in the pan is gonna steam and slow down our browning process. So we're gonna get them nice and dry both sides. I'm just gonna set that paper towel down, just like that. We'll throw one more on top. Time to preheat the pan. We're looking for medium-high heat, and I'm using my trusty cast iron. And the key here is having a pan that can go directly into the oven. Medium high, let's go with the 7.5 here, but if you're working on a stove at home, if it's a gas stove, go all the way to high and then just turn it back a notch. On your electric burners, you wanna go to about an eight out of 10. So we're gonna season these really simply. Just a little bit of coarse ground salt. And we'll add some pepper now, but today we're gonna do a really basic lemon pepper so we're gonna add a little bit more ground pepper to the pan once we get liquid going. As we let the pan heat up, I'm gonna add a little bit of cooking oil. I'm using a high temperature cooking oil, something that's been refined. In this case, avocado oil that has been naturally refined. That means the purities are gone and it's not gonna scorch as it heats up. I'm using avocado oil, but alternatives are coconut oil or ghee, clarified butter, any oil that works really well with a high temperature. Any of the corn oil, sunflower, safflower oil, those are really good for cooking too. So as soon as that oil starts to move around the pan and we might see a little bit of steam on the edges, we're gonna add the chicken breast to the pan and get the searing process started. All right, the oil has started to coat the whole bottom of the pan. It means it's hot enough to start searing. So I'm gonna put those chicken breasts in, the seasoning side down. And once they're in the pan, I'll season the other side. Nice and easy. The problem with cooking chicken breast is they tend to dry out really quickly. So we're gonna combat that by adding a little bit of moisture to the pan. In this case, it's gonna be lemon juice, a little bit of stock, I have chicken stock, and a splash of butter. Now you can use your favorite citrus, you can use water instead of stock, or any other type of liquid that you think would taste delicious, a barbecue sauce, a tomato sauce, beer, wine, all of those will work really nicely. The key is just adding a little bit of moisture once you're done searing. If we add moisture before we're done searing, we lower the temperature in the pan, and then the searing process slows down. So we're gonna let them sear nicely first. Now I'm just looking for a little bit of brown, 
It'll take about a minute and a half on each side. While we let the chicken sear on one side, I'll give you two quick tips about choosing lemons. Number one is I always look for a lemon with a smooth surface. Generally that means that lemon is gonna be a lot juicier than the bumpy surfaced ones. And number two, if it is stiff, put a little weight on it, roll it between your hands and the cutting board, like so. Breaks up some of the connective fibers inside, easier to squeeze. And then I'm just gonna slice it in half. Soft and supple. All right. Our chicken breasts have seared about a minute and a half, two minutes per side. You can see there's a nice brown crust. Now it's time to start building our sauce. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of liquid, in this case, chicken stock. And then on top of that, we're gonna go lemon. And you see how easily the juice just comes out of it? Rolling it on the counter, best trick in the world. And then we're gonna stir in just a little bit of butter. It's gonna give the sauce a bit of creaminess. And last but not least, whole bunch of fresh ground black pepper. That's gonna give a nice fruity element, a little bit of a bite. Let's give that a quick stir just to have it come together. And I can tell you already, it smells incredible. There's lemony, citrusy zest pouring out of it, deep chicken flavor. You get the roast from the brown searing. All right, we're gonna put those into the oven to let them finish cooking. And while they're in there, they're gonna absorb all that beautiful moisture. All right. Cast iron gets hot, so be careful. And now we're gonna head over to the oven, which has been preheating 325, just the right temperature. It's not gonna overcook the chicken. It's not gonna break the sauce. It's gonna make everything come together. We're gonna give it about 10, 15 minutes in the oven and then we're gonna take the temperature. See you in a bit. Exactly 10 to 15 minutes have gone by. Exactly. We're gonna take a look. Oh yeah. Oh, it smells incredible. All right. Now we're just gonna double check that temperature, make sure we're on point. The invaluable tool of the protein chef is a good instant read digital thermometer. And will you look at that? Perfectly cooked, moist, juicy. We're gonna put those on the cutting board and let them rest for about three minutes before we get into slicing. And in the meantime, what we're gonna do is reduce our sauce a little bit. So we've got this beautiful pan sauce. It's got the roasted chicken juice. It's got lemon, butter, chicken stock, lots of good black pepper. We're gonna let that concentrate a little bit. And then we're gonna serve that over the chicken breasts. Now, if you wanted to add any other vegetables to your dish, now while you reduce the sauce would be a great time to do that. All right, chicken breasts right onto the counter go. Three minutes of resting time is a good amount. Five minutes is better. What we want are the juices inside to get reabsorbed into the protein fibers. That's going to make sure every bite you take is as juicy as possible. And we'll just let that sauce go. It's going to evaporate. It's going to concentrate. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I mean, just look at that. Gorgeous. While the sauce is reducing, let's take a look at the chicken breast. Now there is a pretty distinct grain running along the breast and you can see it running in that direction. For a super tender bite, when we slice the chicken breast, we wanna go against the grain like so. And that means that each bite will have short grains 
be easier to chew, won't be stringy, and it'll be as tender as possible. So we're just gonna give that a quick slice. And you can see the juice coming out of it now means I didn't rest it long enough. So a couple more minutes of resting time would be great, but it's still gonna be super juicy, super moist and tender. I mean, look how it just comes apart right there. Perfectly cooked. The steam rising means there's still plenty of moisture in the chicken breast. Whenever you cook a chicken breast, as long as you add a little bit of liquid, you're guaranteed it's gonna be absolutely perfect. And now this sauce is reducing beautifully. It smells incredible. The browning process that we did at the beginning, that sear, that makes sure everything is gonna be amazing. I mean, it gives it color, it gives it flavor, it smells magical. This is gonna be the best chicken breast you ever had. And I used ingredients that were just lying around. A couple of lemons, a little bit of chicken stock, black pepper. Sauce is nearly done, so we're gonna finish slicing up our breast and put it on a plate and drizzle some of that beautiful sauce on it. Let's go right onto the plate. Beautiful. Now this sauce is basically caramelized. The sugars in the lemon and the protein that's cooked into the pan, absolutely beautiful. The butter is browned, it's just gorgeous. This is gonna add so much flavor. So I'm just gonna drizzle that right onto our chicken breast. I'm just gonna give that a quick taste just to make sure it's perfect. Wow, that is incredible. That is the best chicken breast I've ever tasted. So simple. Lemon, butter, chicken stock, seared well, cooked gently. It just comes together. It is magical. I'm telling you, this is gonna be some of the best chicken breast you've ever had. So why don't you go cook some chicken breast? If I can do this without food coming out of my mouth, be real happy about it. I'm Yankel, see you next time.